Hello everybody and welcome to my top 50 albums of 2017. I am super excited to do this. I haven't done one of these since I want to say 2012, 2013. Uh, so I'm really excited to be able to do this project again. Uh, and boy was it a project. I listened to 125 albums this year, uh, cut down to you know my top 50 and then re-listened to every one of them over the last couple of weeks just to see if I had the order right. Um, so this has been a big project and I'm finally so happy to share this with all of you. Now a couple of guide, uh, guidelines. First off, I'm not putting any albums on my list that I have not listened to. So the biggest one is going to be Jay-Z's uh, 444. I did not get to listen to that. Um, kind of hard to find anywhere other than title. Um, so unfortunately I did not listen to it. I might make an album review video for it if I ever get to listen to it. Um, second, this is my list. Most importantly, this is my list and this is what I think are my top 50 albums. Now, there isn't like a big difference between 50 and 49 or like 45 and 44. You know, the, the, the single ones aren't like that far apart. So if something is underneath that, Again, it this is literally what I feel at this time. I could listen through these top 50 again and, and change a little bit more of it. Uh, the top 10, pretty set in stone, but like everything else is varied. Uh, so uh, don't get mad if a certain one is above this, uh, a certain album that you like. Uh, and again, if you don't see one of your albums on there, I'm sorry, this is what I feel. I personally go for something that's more of a cohesive, uh, album rather than a, an album that's defined by one really good single. Uh, I also like CDs that take risks or try something new. Um, so that is where I personally am. Um, now, um, since I'm going over the rules and uh, I do have a couple of things that just missed the list that I'm going to go over, um, this video is going to be hopefully on the shorter side in terms of the descriptions of each album. Um, but as time goes on, um, in the next parts, I'm going to do try to limit myself to a minute to a minute and a half uh, on each of the albums. So that way I'm not doing a 30 minute uh, video each time like the last time I did this. Um, of course, if you want to hear more on some of these albums I don't talk about, I do have album reviews for some of them. I am looking to do album reviews for more of them so I can go more in depth on why I really like this. Um, so that is something. And also, look out for the last part of this video, the, our top 10, because uh, there will be a special guest on there. Uh, you will recognize this person uh, if you watched me last year. Uh, so, without further ado, let's go over my ones that just missed a cut. So first one will be um, Godspeed, You Black Emperor, uh, Luciferian Towers. It's a really cool album. Um, it's it's instrumental and it's it's very like minimalist uh, in terms of sound. It's most of the songs, there's basically four songs and two of them have three parts to it if you listen to it on YouTube. Uh, but it's really cool music. Um, just, it's very, like I said, minimalist. It goes on. There are some songs that take forever to build, which aren't bad, but it because of that, it just missed my cut. It was like 51. Um, it's really cool if you are into stuff like that, um, but it just missed the cut for me. Um, another one is uh, The Magnetic Fields 50 Song Memoir. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Mad in the Fields. Uh, I listened to their 69 love songs, um, uh, and I never didn't really like it. I didn't really understand it at the time. Uh, but this wasn't bad. It's just, again, it's a very long thing. It's literally 50 songs. So you're going to be, if you're going to listen to the whole thing, you are investing about two and a half hours on this. Um, none of the songs are really that long. At most, it's like four minutes. Um, and they all have their different feels. I, I commend uh, Magnet of the Fields for that because the person, the lead player in it, played about 100 different instruments over um, this whole entire memoir. Um, and it's really an interesting concept. I just didn't like most of it. Um, 
but I want to give a shout out to it because it was a really cool uh, idea and there are some nice stuff on it. So if you are into that, definitely take a look. Um, some other ones, uh, we have um, The Flaming List, Oxy Melody, hopefully I said that right. Um, not a great CD again, but it's just a very interesting one. It's very like out of left field. It's very weird, very trippy. I would put it up with their album, The Terror. It kind of has that type of feel of just like all over the place, just like, but it's it's a little bit more vocal heavy. Um, so it's a very interesting CD. It definitely was um, one that was on my mind for a while, but I it's not good enough for me to put in the top 50. Um, we have N Ninja Six Parties, uh, Under the Covers 2. Just a really good cover album of uh, 80s music. Really like it. I love Ninja Sex Party. Um, they're a good, uh, they're a good band that that incorporates that 80, 80s feel. It's just nothing really that changes up anything. Um, it's a lot of just the covers themselves. Though I personally love Something About You, um, and they do a good uh, cover of Billy. Don't you lose that number. Um, another fun one. Um, then we have. Um, Robert Plant, Carrie Fire, very Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin feel, um, it just not good enough for me to put on the top 50, um, just, it wasn't, it was lacking in some places for me, um, so that's why I did not put on the top 50, um, then we have two, uh, ones that are really cool in music, but, uh, are from different countries, and I can't, and I'll explain for a second why, for me, I can't really do it. So um, we have Residente uh, with Residente uh, as the album. And then you also have um, Songhoi Blues uh, Resistance. Uh, so Resist, uh, Residente is a, uh, a, a, a Spanish artist. Um, and for me, and, and, and then Songhoi Blues is uh, a band from Mali, um, and great music. Residente is a really cool concept of just taking a lot of different sounds from um, his from around the world. He basically looked for people, uh, musicians that shared his bloodline, um, and it's really cool music, very varied. Um, you even get a little thing from Lin Manuel Miranda at the beginning. Which is really cool. However, the the biggest thing for me uh, with that and Songhoi Blues, Songhoi Blues is more of a, uh, a rock ish um, CD, and it's really cool, really funky. It's just for me, um, it's the lyric part. I can't. It's not that I can't look up lyrics and read through them, but for me, it's kind of like a one to one thing. It, it like. I can listen to English lyrics and I can feel and understand them one-to-one. -one. But when I look at an English translation of said thing, I'm not feeling it one-to-one. -one. I'm feeling, you know, the what it's supposed to be translated. And there's some stuff that you get lost in translation. Um, even just like the idea of rhythm. Like the rhythm of what you would say in English it wouldn't be the same as if you would say it in... Um, in any other language. So that's why I can't put on the top 50 for me. That is, it, they're great albums, and if you are interested in stuff like that, go for it. But for me, that's the reason why I can't do that. And number one, last one, a lot of people are gonna be probably shocked about this one, but Lana Del Rey's uh, newest album, Lust for Life. Uh, it wasn't a bad album, but as I listen to it more and more, the problem that I have with it is the first half of the CD isn't great, um, and it's 16 songs. So you have to get through eight songs in order to feel like this is a good album. And um, there are just other CDs that were um, much more better and quicker to to the punch if you were, you know, even if they had bad songs at the beginning. Um, not bad. And I would listen to it again. It's just I wouldn't listen to the whole CD again. So that is out of my uh, top 50. So let's run through these quickly.
Here is number 50, and that is Waisahachi Out in the Storm. Um, a cool, uh, as you would say, a indie alternative rock CD. Um, it was produced by uh, the by someone who produces Dinosaur Jr.'s uh, music, and you can definitely hear that production value in it. Really cool sound. Um, doesn't have a lot of substance to it. It does talk a lot about um, breakups and uh, you know turmoil between lovers, uh, but. Uh, it's not nearly as memorable as, say, everything else on the list. Uh, the the Shining Grace, though, is about 32 minutes. It's one of the uh, shortest albums on this list. It's fun. It has some interesting ideas. And that's why it cracks the top 50 at number 50. Number 49, we have uh, V-A-E-R Sextech, um, Far From Over. Now, also, I'm looking at my computer, of course, because I have a lot of information on here. So, if you see me going like this, that's because of this. But anyways, uh, VJER, uh, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, is a uh, jazz musician um, from New York. He actually works at Harvard University. Uh, so, that's really cool, really close to where I live. Um, and uh, Sex Set was really cool. Um, it is a really interesting... Uh, take on like funk jazz um, with a little bit of like Coltrane modal uh, feel to it. There's a lot of really cool um, solos on it. Uh, I like the compositions of a lot of the work. Um, it's just it's not the most approachable jazz CD. Um, so that for me is a reason why it's a little bit lower on this list, but it's still a really good jazz CD if you like you know Coltrane-esque music. Uh, more modal work than tonal work, um, and it was a fun album, and I'll definitely listen to it again. Uh, number 48 is Courtney Bennett and Kurt Vile, Lot of Sea Lice. Now, I've seen a lot of people praise this album. I like it. Uh, I like the, the, the lyrics. Um, I like the music, um, but it's not I like it in the sense of, like, really love it. It's it's funny, interesting music um, and funny and quirky lyrics. Um, it's something that I haven't really heard much of this year. Um, there is only another one person I can really think of that is kind of like that, and that will be later on this list. Um, but it's quirky. It's fun. It's another shorter album. They work very well together. Um, their voices blend oddly enough in a weird way because they're not like they're interesting singers. Um, if you've heard uh, Kurt Vile before, you can tell he has a, a drawl with his with his singing. Um, it's more of like a sing speech. Um, so a lot of good stuff on it. Uh, just not as to me. I didn't love it as much as a lot of other people did. So now we have number 47, and this one is probably going to be the, my first one that people are going to get a little bit mad at. So I'm going to go with Eminem's Revival. Now I know a lot of people don't actually like this CD that much. They are saying that uh, the music isn't great, and I, can, I tend to agree. Um, his, the music on it isn't as great as previous albums, and I can understand that. Um, they have, there's a song like, I love you, um, cause you remind me of me, uh, and it uses, um, I love rock and roll as the, uh, the music and it doesn't really work cause it's just like, I love you cause you love, cause you remind me of me. And, um, it's just like a stretch. Um, there's, there's some other ones that just don't really work musically. Um, especially at the beginning. And I would say that the beginning couple of songs aren't great. The, the singles aren't the best. Um, but again, if this is one where if you actually dive into it, there's a lot of really good stuff on it. Um, Walk on Water isn't actually a bad song to me. Um, 
I love the idea of him talking about, you know, wines is still being the game and still trying to be in the game and everyone's saying that it's passing you by. Um, he has a lot of great lyrics. He has a lot of great ways of interpreting those lyrics. Um, and it's some of his, I, I personally think it's some of his more uh, solid work. It's not like great. Like it's not, this isn't the best album. This is one of his worst albums in years in, in comparison. But he's also had a lot of great albums over the years. So it's still good. It's just not top 10 good for me. Uh, there's a lot of good songs on here. Walk on Water, Like Home, which I hope becomes uh, a single because it is phenomenal. It's one of the one of a really really great call out to Donald Trump, um, and he does that a lot on this album. Uh, it talks about uh, politics and stuff like that, um, and there's a lot of really good stuff on here. But there's also a lot of weird transitions. So like there's a song right after Like Home about talking about his wife, and then after that, and talking about like how he was wrong for everything, and you know. A really heartfelt song, um, which is another one of the be one of the better songs on the album. And then from there, it goes to a song that, if you weren't li listening clearly or didn't know it, it, sounds like it's kind of attacking his wife again. So it's like literally right be right next to each other. Um, there's also a really cool two parter at the end um, that I will not give away, but definitely listen to it. Don't listen to the critics. It's really good. Uh, I mean, it's it's good. It's not really great. But it's good, good enough to make the top 50 in a year that unfortunately isn't that great of, doesn't have a lot of dearth of music um, that was good. Um, but just again, quickly on the, the music part, personally, like, I heard those same people who are saying that are praising Migos. And I would say, like, that has worse music than this album. So, just saying. But anyways, gotta keep moving. So now we're at number 46. Number 46 is Creator uh, Gods of Violence. Uh, this actually literally just m made the list last night. Um, I was listening to this on request of my brother, um, who is a huge metal fan. And uh, I listened to it and I really liked it. It's a German thrash metal band. Um, and it's not... A, a CD that does like anything that blows you up, uh, like blows you away. Like it's not something that's going to like take this um, genre and put it on put it on his head. But it's a very very uh, solid, very very technically great thrash album. Um, it's it harkens back to Metallica, harkens back to Slayer and all these bands, but does it better at their this point in time. Um, just really, really solid thrash metal. So if you love that type of music, you will love this band. Then we have number 45, which is Sufjan Stevens, uh, Bryce Desner, Nico Mully, and James McAllister's Planeta Planetarium. Um, so this is a concept album, um, as you can probably imagine, about the solar system. Um, and um, it has Sufjan Stevens singing, and then it has all these other people's orchestra. Uh, they all work together to produce uh, this sound. And it's really, really cool. I didn't like it the first time around, but I listened to it again. And I really was fascinated by the sounds. I love Sufjan Stevens as a songwriter and as a singer. Um, and he does phenomenal on this CD. Everything blends very well together. Um, the only downside is it is a little bit long. Um, it's an hour and 16 minutes, I want to say. Uh, and um, it does get a little bit long in general. There is a 15 minute song about Earth, but it's, but all of it works very well together. All of it blends very well. You have like a song like The Sun, and then you have like the black hole right next to it. And just like all these really cool ideas. Um, it's definitely a, a CD worth listening to um, at least once because it's a really cool idea, especially if you love Subjection Stevens. All right, 
So we are now on to number 44. And number 44 is Synthesis by Evanescence. Um, now, I first thought when listening to the CD that this was going to be a uh, completely new uh, album um, by their um, by their single Imperfection. I was like, oh yes, they finally are coming out with a new CD because Amy Lee is a fantastic songwriter, fantastic singer. Um, some of the best early 2000s music comes from, from Evanescence. So really, really beautifully classic yet met, like metal music. And I was super excited, um, but I found out that it wasn't that. It was actually a uh, reworking of a lot of their, their famous songs um, to have, uh, have like synthesizer and uh, violins and orchestra behind it. Uh, and a lot of just like melted down music. And it works very well. If you love Evanescence, um, this is a great homage to everything that they have done. Um, again, I just wish it was an, a new album. Hopefully they're going to come out with a new album soon. Um, but beautiful. You even have Lindsey Sterling on there for one of the songs, High Low, uh, which is one of the new songs. Uh, so cool cameo. Uh, the only downside is some of the songs do feel weird um, without like all the, the, the rock behind it. Like... Um, for example, uh, Wake Me Up does kind of feels weird because it doesn't have that other part uh, from the lead singer of 12 Stones. Um, so it just feels a little bit weird in general, um, especially if you love that song. But if you love Evanescence, it is a great album to listen to just to feel again like their music and hear it reworked. So on a similar line, uh, number 43, we have Tracy Bonham's Modern Blues. Um, now, I had never heard of Tracy Bonham uh, beforehand. Um, this is a CD that I found on the top 50 Rolling Stones albums. Um, but Tracy Bonham was a singer-songwriter in the 90s. Um, this is actually a reworking of her most famous album, The Burdens of Being Upright. Uh, this is about the 20th anniversary of that CD, uh, and it's a modern reworking of it. Um, and it has, it's really, really cool. I like the sound. I like uh, all the different lyrics, and I love just the music behind all of it. And I actually then went back to lis listen to this uh, album, uh, The Burdens of Being Upright, uh, because uh, I had never listened to it, and I am sad to say that I wish that I had heard it when I was younger because it's right up my alley in terms of 90s music. Um, so uh, really, really cool sound. Um, I would say comparing the two, The Burns of Being Upright is still better, but the, the reworkings of these songs are actually more interesting, I would say, than uh, Synthesis. So that's why I have it higher. Um, if you love that type of music, 90s music, definitely take a look into it. Um, but also, if you haven't heard it, definitely then go back to The Burdens of Being Upright because that is a, something worth listening to as well. I would put it like closer to like Alanis Morissette in terms of sound, uh, which, again, huge fan of her. So um, definitely take a look. Number 42 is All Is As All Should Be uh, by the Deer Hunter. Um, now this is an EP. You know how much I love Deer Hunter. I've talked about them numerous of times. Um, they were the, my number one album of the year last year. Uh, they put out a, a surprising EP uh, this year. Uh, and it's a cool concept. It's uh, songs of uh, that were written um, for certain people, certain fans of theirs. Um, and it's really, really cool. Uh, in terms of sound, uh, it's more experimental than they have been, uh, and I commend them for them. But because of that, there are only a few s songs on that six-song EP that I really, really love. Um, and that's why it's a little bit lower than, uh, say, other um, albums on this list. It's commend their work, but also a little bit... Um, 
a little bit too experimental on certain parts. If you are a Deer Hunter fan, um, you may not love this as much as their other work, but it's still good. Uh, and then number 41 is another CD uh, recommended by my brother uh, called Clairvoyant by The Contortionist. Um, now, um, Contortionist is a progressive metal band, um, but don't think on the lines of like Rush, don't think on the lines of Dream Theater. Uh, this is more a minimalist style of progressive metal. Now, personally, I did not love the CD uh, when I first listened to it. It actually took me until yesterday to be like, okay, I can understand this, I can feel this, and I really like some of the concepts on there. Uh, personally, I don't really like the singer. Um, he doesn't portray this this style well enough to me. Um, kind of too too sparse, even for minimalist standards. Uh, so that's why it's lower on this list, but it's still a really good um, progressive album. Uh, definitely might take you a couple times to get some of it or feel some of it, but it has some really cool uh, musical ideas. Um, so, all in all, a really good CD, just doesn't crack that top 40. Uh, but, tomorrow you will see what cracks that top 40. I'm going to try to put out one CD every, I mean, one, uh, one video every single day. Um, and this one is a little bit longer, I do apologize. Again, um, had to go over the rules, had to go over the ones that just missed the cut. Uh, but, I'm going to try to make this about 20 minutes long next time around. But anyways, if you love this, love what I'm doing, of course, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, um, and stay tuned for what I have in store for my next part. And again, if you have certain CDs that you want to say your top 10 of the year, uh, let me know in the description, um, because uh, I would love to see what you think as your, uh, your favorite albums of the year. But anyways, until then, I will see you in the next video. Peace.